Today we're going over tips and tricks to remember the two posterior compartments of the lower leg. Now there are four compartments in the lower leg. We have the anterior, the lateral, the superficial posterior, and the deep posterior. But for now, let's look at the superficial posterior compartment specifically. So there's three muscles in the superficial posterior compartment and they all insert into the Achilles tendon and they perform plantar flexion. So these are some of the muscles you would use if you're trying to step on the gas in your car and the most superficial is the gastrocnemius. So just remember stepping on the gas and the gastrocnemius to kind of remind you what these muscles can do. The gastrocnemius originates off both the lateral and medial epicondyles of the femur. And to remember this, I think of the gastrocnemius like a gymnast hanging off the femur with one hand on each side. So the medial and lateral epicondyles, the muscle then narrows, and then of course it inserts into the Achilles tendon. Underneath the gastrocnemius, we have a very easy to forget muscle, the plantaris, which originates off the lateral epicondyle as well. You can think of the plantaris muscle like a plant with one very long root or stem that goes all the way down and inserts into the Achilles tendon as well. Deep to the plantaris, we have the soleus muscle, which originates off the tibia and the fibula. To keep the gastrocnemius and the soleus different in your mind, try to remember that the soleus does not cross the knee joint like the gastrocnemius does. Therefore, you can target the soleus specifically during exercise by doing a bent knee heel raise that looks like this. So this position puts the gastrocnemius on slack since it crosses the knee joint and allows you to focus on the soleus specifically. So if you think about the soleus, try to remember this position and it'll remind you that the soleus does not cross the knee joint while the gastrocnemius does. Now let's get into the deep posterior compartment. So the good news here is that it's another set of Tom, Dick, and Harry muscles except it's just reversed because it's on the opposite side of the leg. So for the tom, we have the tibialis posterior instead of anterior. For dick, we have the flexor digitorum longus. And then for the hairy, we have the flexor hallucis longus instead of the extensors. To remember the location of these muscles, if you think of a cross section of the lower leg, the flexor hallucis longus will be at a diagonal to the big toe, while the flexor digitorum longus will be at a diagonal to the pinky toe or fifth digit. So it will kind of look like an X with the tibialis posterior nestled around the middle. And finally, we have our one unique muscle, which is the popliteus muscle, which is also in the deep posterior compartment, but it does not go to the foot. In fact, it originates off the lateral epicondyle of the femur. It then crosses over and inserts on the posterior tibia. So the main action of the popliteus muscle is to unlock the knee joint at the start of flexion by undoing the screw home mechanism. So it can either externally rotate the femur or help internally rotate the tibia, depending on if you're in an open or closed chain position. In either case, just remember the popliteus pops open the knee joint and allows it to flex. Now we can take a look at the insertion points on the foot for these two compartments. So all three muscles of the superficial posterior compartment they come down, merge together into the Achilles tendon, and sit right here on the posterior side of the calcaneus. So this bone right here, of course, is the calcaneus, and then inserts right here on the posterior side. For the muscles of the deep posterior compartment, well, one thing to remember is that the tibialis posterior is basically the most popular muscle maybe in the entire body. So what happens is it comes down here and inserts on the navicular, on the medial cuneiform, on the middle cuneiform, the lateral cuneiform, and then the base of the second, third, and fourth metatarsals. So basically it inserts on seven different bones. So think of the tibialis posterior as being the most popular muscle in the body and inserts on seven different bones. It basically just kind of covers this whole area. As for the flexor digitorum longus, it comes down here, the four tendons, and inserts on the distal phalanx of each of these toes. So remember just the distal and not the middle, like the other side. So the extensor digitorum like this goes to both the middle and the distal phalanx, but the flexor only goes to the distal phalanx. Then the flexor hallucis longus just has one insertion right there on the distal phalanx of the hallux or the first digit. For the innervation, as we mentioned in previous videos, the sciatic nerve is basically just two nerves in one sheath. And those two nerves split apart right above the popliteal fossa. The tibial nerve goes straight down and supplies every single muscle in both posterior compartments. So what you can do is think about a sweet cross tattoo on the back of your calf to remind you that this is all tibial nerve country, tibial with a T, T for that cross tattoo that's on the back of your calf. All right, so hopefully some of these tips helped you out. As always, thanks for watching, and of course, good luck on your next test.